Are you looking to increase your mobility, decrease the pain in your hips or knees, and improve your quality of life? Well, then you may be a candidate for knee or hip replacement surgery. There are over a million of the replacement surgeries performed each year right here in the United States. Surgeries that can alleviate pain, reduce limitations, and get people back to everyday activities sooner than they ever thought could be possible. If you're considering treatment for your orthopedic needs, stay tuned as we discuss the life-changing treatment and surgery options at Catholic Health Services and the industry's latest technological advancements. It's all on today's episode of CHS Presents, Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jane Hansen. Joining me today from St. Charles Hospital is orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Nikul Kakari. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. It's thanks a pleasure for having to have me. you. So are you seeing, we're talking specifically about hip replacements with you. Are you seeing more and more of them necessary these days? Yes, we are. As the body ages, the hair uh, color changes, we get cat tracks and guess what? The joint wears down. So we need new hips. And a lot of those baby boomers are needing more and more hips and knees. Is that because we've been a lot more active or is it because it's genetic or what is it? Um, we call it multifactorial, which means there are many reasons. For most patients, uh, there is a genetic uh, predisposition and uh, that is the cause for arthritis in the overwhelming majority of patients. What, how do you know when it's bad enough that you need to have your hip replaced? That's a great question. We keep it easy in orthopedics. Uh, I follow the three strike rule. First and the most important strike is the patient telling me that the pain interferes with their activities of daily living. They cannot do what they want to do on a daily basis because of the pain. That's the first and the most important strike. Second strike is that the x-ray shows arthritis. And the third strike is on clinical examination. I know that the pain is coming from that joint. Only if these three strikes come together, uh, we discuss uh, joint replacement surgery. Now you do a rather unusual, uh, and you're known for the kind of hip replacement you do that is called the anterior approach. That's What's right. different from the past? So traditionally, the hip replacement was done through a posterior approach, which means uh, the surgeon went from behind to access the hip joint, and uh, that involved cutting a lot of muscles. Uh, because of that, uh, the rehabilitation was a lot longer. Uh, the patients had to follow something called as hip dislocation precautions, which means um, that the ball can pop out of the socket. And uh, what that meant to the patient was that they had to use a high toilet seat after the surgery for about six to eight weeks. They should not be crossing their legs after the surgery, again, for, uh, for the same amount of time. And they should be keeping their knees apart. So they should be sleeping with a pillow in between their knees to prevent the ball from popping out of the socket. Mm -hmm. um, there are other advantages, too, of um, an anterior hip replacement because absolutely no muscles are cut during the surgery at all. We go between the muscles and do the hip replacement. So the rehab is a lot faster. And literature has shown that patients get rid of their assistive devices like a walker and a cane much sooner than the traditional approach. So you've got this little doodad here. This is actually what you put into somebody's body. This is a real hip, yes. Uh, so uh, the hip is made of two components. One is the ball, mm -hmm. uh, which goes on the upper side of the hip. And this is uh, something that goes inside the thigh bone. So we put in the cup, we put in the stem, and then we put it all together. It's amazing. And people are, can regain all of their activities very quickly afterwards, which Absolutely. is amazing. Hip replacement is one of the most satisfying surgeries in orthopedics. Well, you know what? On that note, let's take a look at some video of a patient of yours and uh, talking about the process and, and, and what the patient went through. So let's sure. look at the video. I'm Jeff Huvar. I had my hip replaced about a year ago. and. Uh, I wanted a hospital on Long Island and it was important to me to uh, make sure I, uh, the doctor knew the anterior approach because it's a much quicker recuperation period. So I found Dr. Kikari and uh, ended up here. I was first looking for a doctor that knew the anterior procedure and um, there's, there's very few in Long Island that, that knows how to do it professionally. Uh, before I found Dr. Kakari, I was talking to some um, 
doctors in the city, uh, which is, you know, inconvenient to get to, and I, I wanted to stay on Long Island. And then I found Dr. Kakari. I guess I found him, I wasn't, it was through the internet, probably, that I found it. And I'm glad I did, actually. Mainly, I really started, it started being painful sometimes when I was walking and I ended up limping. And, um, you know, you don't want to lean to one way because that'll mess your back up. So I figured it's about time I got the thing done. Everybody was very friendly and they, they made it uh, uh, very comfortable to uh, what could be a scary situation. Before you could have the surgery, you have to attend uh, this class, which explains the procedure. Well, they just explained the whole procedure. You know, you would come here at a certain time, you go to pre-op, and, uh, and they, they just walked you through it. So it, you weren't just walking in cold. And then when you finally came for the, um, you know, for the operation, they, um, you know, you're in the pre-op, and they explain again what the procedure is. And uh, before you know it, the operation is over, and uh, you're in your room. As far as the rehab was concerned, I was sort of, I was home in like the, the second day. I came in like a Monday morning at seven and like by Tuesday evening I was on my way home. And, and interestingly enough, I was back to work like the next day because I work out of the house. <laughs> so I commuted down the basement and I was able to um, negotiate my stairs. I have a, a colonial so I had to go upstairs to bed and downstairs to work. So that was immediately. The, as far as the rehab, they, um, even the rehab was, um, they were surprised how quickly I was recuperating and uh, compared to other patients that had the posterior approach. After I was released from the hospital, Catholic Health Services came to the house three times a week for the first two weeks. And uh, after that, I, I went to St. Charles outpatient rehabilitation center which was right in Huntington. I would say the operation was a total success. I mean there's just no limitation what what you can do. Uh, you know I was probably sometimes had to use a cane occasionally beforehand and uh, and now you know I just uh, it doesn't enter my thought what I can do and what I can't do. Dr. Kakari uh, uh, knows how appreciative I am of his uh, of his services and what a you know, expert he really is in this particular type of procedure. And, um, and also there's this follow-up involved. There's a couple of follow-up visits and, uh, you know, he makes sure everything's okay. And uh, he knows I'm very happy with the results. And I may have to see him again for the other hip one of these days. So it's no wonder you like to do hip surgery so much. The patients are always satisfied. Exactly. Uh the experience after getting a hip replacement is a lot different than getting a knee replaced. I tell my patients, getting hip replacement, don't speak to somebody who has a knee replaced. <laughs> after a knee replacement, uh, I tell my patients, you're not going to be happy at a month. You see light at the end of the tunnel at six weeks, and then you're significantly better at uh, three months. After hip replacement, the first time they put their foot on the floor, they realize the difference. They're walking the same day of surgery with a walker, uh, then they progress on to walking with a cane on the other side, uh, then to no support at all. But they're significantly better within days. You know, my brother had both of his hips replaced, and he was told by his doctor that he would have to wait a significant period of time between the two surgeries. But you actually now, and his, his was done three or four years ago, but you now can actually do both hips at once. Absolutely. Now, we have to be very careful of who is the right candidate to get both hips replaced. Surgically, it's very easy to do them both at the same time. What we worry about is the medical aspect of things. So if a patient has cardiac problems, if there are severe lung problems, then we prefer to do one hip at a time or one joint at a time, simply because we worry about how the heart and lung will react to getting both hips done. It's a lot of surgery for the patient. Yeah, it sounds like it. At St. Charles, you've got a really fine reputation for your orthopedic work. How did it take some time to develop that reputation and why do you think you guys get such a good rap out there? It's important to choose a hospital where joint replacement surgeries are done in a large volume. Literature is clear. The larger the volume, better the outcomes. 
So as example, uh, at St. Charles Hospital, we have a pre-operative class in which uh, I encourage the patients to go there so they learn of what is involved in their hospital stay. What is going to go on? How, what are they going to do when they go in? Uh, what is going to happen the day of surgery? And uh, we do a lot of discharge planning even before the patient goes to the hospital. And most hips go home. So we evaluate if they have stairs. So they know in their mind that if they have stairs, uh, they should be able to go up and down stairs before they go home, as an example. Sure, just thinking about simple things that it could be a, could be a hassle Absolutely. afterwards, but if you prepare ahead of time, then it eliminates the potential for um, something not so good happening, Absolutely. a fall or something. That's great. Well, congratulations on and all the great stuff you thank do. You. Stick around. You're going to come back at the end of the show. Great, Lovely to you. talk with you. And we're going to take a quick break, but we'll check. Uh, be back with more CHS Presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health right after this.